Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about accessibility and I really hope that everything I tell you today in this video is obvious and something that you already knew. But I'm making this video in order to get everybody up on the same page and hopefully there is something about accessibility that do, you don't know. Uh, first, I wanted to tell you some facts. Uh, there is an organization, the World Health Organization, that do statistics over the world and look at different um, health issues on the uh, in the world and try to make sense of a lot of data. And they have uh, on their webpage a number that 15% of the world population has some disability and they also says that at the moment there is one eighth of the population that has a disability and over your lifetime there will be one fifth of you that will have a disability of some kind and everyone i believe will have a disability sometime even if it's temporal for instance, if you're carrying a bag, you're carrying a baby, you are um, uh, engaged with something with your hand and only have one hand on your mobile phone, for instance. Um, not while driving. Driving is not a good example because you shouldn't use the web <laughs> while driving. But when you're using the web, you might be have a disability of some kind and some people have these disabilities every day, every time they go on the internet. And if you're looking at how large of a population that is, that's one billion people. So that's as many people that lives in um, India, if I'm not uh, misremembering how many people are in India, but the, it's a large amount of people. It's very many people. Um, so, uh, this is something that we should take very seriously. And if we look at this page here, you can uh, see some links, I hope, in this text. And it might take you a while, you can pause the video and see if you can find some links in this text. Um, and can you see what the button says? I'm not uh, saying that it's simple, I think it's pretty... Uh, impossible to actually see the text uh, for, through the video. I can see it if I really squint my eyes and I know what it says so I can really read this. And this page is shown through a filter called No Coffee uh, that will show you how somebody that has uh, trouble to see colors actually see your page. And now I have uh, made this ridiculous, ridiculous example when you have trouble to see all colors. I believe that's quite rare. Uh, but if I understood this World uh, Health Organization site again, they said that one in 200 women has problems seeing some colors. And one of every 12th guy has a problem seeing color. So it's much more um, prominent in uh, guys to have a problem seeing colors. And uh, as we see, it's very hard to see something. So let's take this filter and change the uh, different uh, values here. So here you have one of the um, abnormalities. Uh, trigger normality. I don't really know what these stand for, but here you can see you don't see the red colors, and then you have really hard to see this. But you see that it says install, and uh, so you can test around here. Here you have removed some of the blue, I guess, or some of the green. Um, if I t take none, you can see it's much easier to read these colors. It's green on red and that's a very common um, thing and I have no good uh, contrast between them so they are hard to read about that as well. And as you see up here 
now you can actually see this link up here and uh, as it has an underline it's even easier to find this link so maybe you found this even though it wasn't really that prominent and this active link here is also good that you can actually see that you have been here before because it has a different color this link without underline i believe you couldn't see because it was it didn't have the underline so it's really hard to see if you can't see this blue color and uh, maybe you could have d uh, made it bold it, that might have been a little bit better but if you are trying to find links and you can't see them it's really hard to navigate your page and if you choose to use uh, something that isn't a link that is clickable it's pretty hard to see here uh, I have somewhere th that it says no link um, it's here and I believe that that's pretty much impossible to find as well so uh, it's good to know that these actually have a uh, purpose it's a purpose to easily find links so that's why you have this underline so if you want to make the change to remove this line you should know that for some people it can be harder to navigate your page so you are removing a feature that someone has really worked hard to add something that is nice easy and understandable and uh, when it comes to uh, ease of use it's the familiarity that you're going after uh, another thing that you can look here is these two buttons you see down here they have the same kind of uh, styling I've taken this styling from a page and uh, they, they are different so if we go here to this active link you see they are get a focus so you see that these links are focused so when you are tabbing through the page using only the keyboard and some people can only use keyboard they can't use the mouse or they have some other technology that helps them to navigate the page which will simulate a keyboard then it's really hard to go through this page if you can't tab through it so if we try to go to this first install link here you see that it goes to the second one it's because the first one has no focus it's clickable so you can go somewhere but it's it can't can't focus this element and it's actually a couple of divs making this uh, button and the problem with having divs making a button is that it will not read anything to a screen reader for instance but if you use a button it will tell you button install so it will actually read the correct context and the correct name of that button so you actually know what you are clicking on if you are uh, have a hard time reading it or if you are un unable to actually see it on the screen if you are blind you can't see things on the screen so you need context you need the actual name of things and if you are, have um, a visual impairments of any kind uh, images can be a real hassle for you so I have two good examples here for instance this first here you uh, have an image of a card and it actually tells you an information card for a restaurant images of stars used for, to represent the star rating so this is uh, uh, they could have actually added four stars so you get all the context they could have added um the name of the restaurant and so on but maybe the context is uh, shown on other sides on on the page then we have this image a woman playing with some dogs giving the impression that the dogs are having a great time you can actually see this image before you even though you can't look at the image if you are um, if you shut your eyes and think of what i just said you might see a similar image uh, so describing something in a manner that you can see it in your mind's eye is very helpful for someone that can't actually see the image so if you want to put in an alt text an alternative text to an image it should be describable 
the last one here, it's a product image. And it doesn't have an alt text. I found this on an image sell uh, a, a page selling a lot of things using images. And it's a very nice image of a very nice shirt. But if you go to this page and you don't get an, uh, the image description and the page doesn't say much about the clothing, uh, it only says, do you want it in blue or red? And it tells you that it has some lace. So if you get this shipped to you, you might be very surprised to see that your shoulder is actually out in the air and you also have a big empty spot of, uh, with only lace on your arm. Um, and I actually got this um, when I bought a clothing, uh, a pair of shorts, intimate shorts, and I actually bought these. And when I looked at the image, I, it looked like it was a brown and uh, black striped shorts. And I thought that that looked really nice and I wanted a pair of those. And when it actually, when I actually got them, they were black with see-through stripes. And if I have known that the, these pair of shorts were that way, I might have not bought them because that is not something that really fits my um, wardrobe. So having a good description on the image might not only be good for somebody that can't see the image, it might be good for someone that might miss some detail in the image. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is select boxes. Um, I haven't found that many examples of this and that's very good in my mind, but uh, I saw this a lot uh, in, uh, in the before in the before time the long long ago uh, like two three years ago people thought that select boxes are ugly and they are really hard to style and I, I believe they are hard to style but it has become much easier with web components and so on but I found this page and I don't want to actually say anything against this developer and uh, it, it's not to actually shame them in any way um, but in this page you see here you have this ugly select box and a lot of work has gone into making this accessible that you can use it with your keyboard the right focus that it works good with screen readers and when you make one of these if we look at the code here, it's actually a div with some spawn and then you had some options in here and these are uh, unordered list with all the options. Well, it works as, as a select box, but you can't actually focus it. It's impossible to focus. You can't use it with keyboard. You don't get any feedback from a screen reader and so on. So if you want to make this kind of uh, select box, you need to put a lot of work into making it accessible. And why would you want to do that when you have a good working select box already that people are accustomed to and actually use today? Um, and if we look at when the select box actually came into uh, the HTML standard, it was somewhere in 95 to 97. So that's 30 years ago. In 30 years, they have taken all these form elements with input, select box, uh, buttons, and so on. And they have worked on these elements in uh, all the major browsers. And uh, there have been a lot of people working on these to making them as accessible as possible and make them work well for users and making users aware of how they work. And if we look at the list of versions that have come out on uh, during that time, you see that it's a lot of man hours or man years or woman years or people years or whatever you want to say. A lot of development time has gone into creating this um, as, as an accessible 
uh, as possible. Um, so it's really something that irks me when someone tries to reinvent the wheel and when you're not sure about how much work it actually takes to make this something that you can ship and actually use and that you don't exclude a lot of people. Uh, another thing that you need to think about when you design a page, so I can take this page for instance, it's a very nice design. It's something that you like to look at, it brings freshness, it's, it looks really nice. But if you, you, if you are a parent, and I am, uh, and if you have a car for instance, uh, and let's say that you have a good day, you have slept well, you have eaten well, and you not much have gone wrong in your day, and you are uh, taking your kids, putting them in the back seat in their uh, um, car seats, and you sit, sit in the driver's seat and try to drive the car for like two hours. If you have this experience, and if you have kids like mine, these two hours can be very challenging on a good day. If you haven't eaten well, if you haven't slept well, and if you have a bad day uh, with headaches or something, that car journey can actually be dangerous because you can have a really hard time to actually focus on bringing the car safely forward with two screaming kids in the back seat. And that's not any, any dig on my kids, they are wonderful, but some things are really hard to handle when a lot of things happening at the same time. A lot of sounds, a lot of things um, if you are trying to do multiple things on the same time or if a lot of things happening you have a hard time to actually handle that and there are people that have a constant amount of um, energy per day they have some something that makes them uh, having less energy than we uh, we have and that these kind of web pages where a lot of things are happening they feel that they are really hard to navigate really hard to uh, uh, take in the information because they, it's happening so much on them uh, pop-up banners are going from uh, left to right and things are swooshing back and forth and, and so on and their energy um, really goes out so they, they can't watch your web page anymore so they just shut it down and if you are trying to sell something online or if you are trying to convey a message and a lot and, and a large group of people just go to your web page see this kind of design and feel that everything jumps around they can't really read anything and suddenly things go sideways for them so they are really feeling that this design is really hard to follow and that it's so much happening on this page that they can't really focus on the content they just want to leave this page because they are tired they don't want to read anymore and uh, do you really want to make that impression on someone that is trying to take read your information is that something that you will want to hinder people from doing just because you want your web page to look fancy, nice or uh, fresh? Is it worth it? Um, if you found this video interesting, if you learned something today, please give me a comment down below. I really hope these things are obvious. Uh, but if you uh, found that, wow, you told me something that I didn't know and I will take this uh, to heart and think about this when I'm uh, creating web pages in the future, then I'm very uh, grateful and I really wish you luck. I don't think this, these things are 
super hard. You just need to think about other people and their experience. Um, if you like this uh, video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.